Greetings. Greetings. You know, back in Ghana, all I hear is good morning, good afternoon. When I get to Jamaica, now I'm changed. I'm more like a changed person. Right now we go by greetings, brothers and sisters. <laughs> As he said, I believe that people thinking that I'm the new Gabi is a big responsibility. I keep on telling people to stop it because I personally did not know who Marcus Garvey is. I have to be honest. Because the education system in Africa does not teach us who we are. I found myself in China thinking that that was the best place for me to, I mean, get to achieve whatever I want to achieve in life. But I tell you what, for going to China, because it made me who I am today. To discover who a black man is. To discover how powerful I am as an African. And that's the message that I've been preaching since I discovered who I am. I normally tell people that I basically don't know what I'm doing. So when you start telling that this guy is a I have no idea what you're talking about. But I believe that it's a calling. Yes. And it has not been easy. I mean, don't, don't, don't take it as if it's been, even in the Caribbean, has been tough for me, but I still keep moving. I mean, if I tell you the struggles that I've been through since I came to Jamaica, most of you will believe it. But I'm always smiling on camera for you to know that nothing will stop this movement. The movement is inspired by Marcus Garvey once again. Personally, like he said, Barry Cohen, when I was in China making Chinese videos, People started calling me Garakoma. <laughs> and I'm like, who is Garakoma? So I started researching about who Garakoma is, and I found who Garakoma is. And then you're right. <laughs> then, when I was in China, I felt like it's about time. It's more like you sleep, you keep on dreaming about Africa. And I was like, how do I get back to London? Because I've made up my mind that I will live and die in China. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing in Africa for me as an African. Aeronautical engineer, you have to, you know, live your life in China and make the best out of it. So I told my mom, I'm coming back home. At that time, I lost my dad in 2017. So my mom started shedding tears. Like, the juju has finally worked. <laughs> and my son decided to leave his career and come back to Africa to reach about Africa. Who does that? But I felt like if no one is doing it, there has to be someone. And if that someone has to be me, I have to start. I know being a pioneer of anything is extremely difficult, but I was happy that when I started this movement, a lot of Africans carry the same movement. So when you go to Africa right now, we have so many young creators that are talking about the beauty of Africa. And if you go to Ghana today, if you go to so many countries in Africa today, there are people that are moving back to the continent because of videos that we've been doing about the continent of Africa. I have to say this, I have no idea, I have no idea that we have brothers and sisters living in the diaspora. And I didn't know who a Jamaican is. I'm just being honest with you. I didn't know who an African American is. I didn't know. But when I started like doing these videos, my classmate was an African American. And there was a day that we were new in class, all of us, and they decided to separate us into different groups. So I saw this black brother who looked like me. And I'm like, hey bro, which part of Africa are you from? Can we just, you know, come together, you know? And this guy was like, my brother, I'm not an African. He was extremely mad for me calling him an African. And I'm like, what is happening to slave trade? Because in Ghana, 90% of Ghanaians don't even know the slave castle that we have in there, that they call castle after the dungeons. We have no idea what happened in there. Because it's not part of our education system. So I took it upon myself to educate myself about what really happened. And that is when people started calling me the new Marcus God. And I'm like, I'm not. So I quickly decided to research about what Marcus God is. And I'm like, oh. The same message. The message
message that I'm preaching about is Africa is home for Africans at home and Africans abroad. Just because of that African American guy who inspired me. So when I got to know that, oh, so you're actually taking from Africa, you're still telling me that you're not African, but you're an African American, then why the name African American? So we're changing it. You're no longer an African American, but you're an African born in America. If I am here today, I am African born in Ghana. If you are in Jamaica, you are an African born in Jamaica. I met somebody telling me that I'm not African, I'm Jamaican American. I'm like, what? <laughs> we have identity crisis as black people. And this is what I'm telling you. See, I know most of you are not happy to claim Africa. The continent is not perfect. Don't let me tell you that the continent is perfect. But Africa is so proud of you. Because despite the fact that you went through all the struggles to get here, you never forgot who you are as an African because I, I came to Jamaica and I see Ghana here. I see Nigeria here. Maybe you don't know. But I, I was in uh, Akonkon last night. I had to come here because of him. I would have been there by now. But I was having a great time with my brothers and sisters on the mountain. <laughs> I, was on a, I was at Akonkon yesterday and as soon as I stepped out, I started crying. Like, how did Ghana go here? <laughs> how? Because they left Ghana 400 years ago. But to today, when you go there, you, that is the only place in Jamaica that I went that is just a replica of Ghana. There's no difference. Like, I, I, I've been moving around trying to see if I can find cocoa plants. <laughs> I ate cocoa yesterday in the cocoa. Everything, you know, do you know you guys call cocoa? It's, a, it's a cocoa. So in Ghana, every household plants cocoa in our backyard. And when you go to a cocoa, it's exactly the same culture. And I was like, you know what? It's about time for us to bridge the gap. It's about time for us to connect. It's about time for us to know that we are one people, even though we find ourselves here. What I'm doing, eh, I don't know. But what I'm just trying to say is, if I can get support from every black man in this world, we will definitely break mountains. Because I, my presence in Babe, I'm into, I started from Surrey now. That's another Africa out of Africa. That Suriname, they didn't speak the Ghanaian language in, in Suriname, and they don't even know that that is a Ghanaian language. Yes. I was there, and people started coming to me. Our two, our two in Ghana, when you are hugging someone in Ghana, even in Nigeria, if you are hugging somebody, it comes to the south. Our two. When I went to Suriname, they saw me as an R2, and I'm like, where am I? Am I in Ghana? <laughs> when they are pouring libation, the things they say, the words they speak, that comes out of their mouth. It's not like, you know, sometimes there's a language in here, they call it chromatin, that you need to be possessed before. In Suriname, you don't have to be possessed. It's, it's direct from the source. So I'm just going to tell you, wherever you're born, please don't forget the motherland. Marcus Garvey is saying that Africa belongs to us all. It's about time. You and I, even, even if you don't get opportunity to stay in Africa, let your feet touch the soil. I believe that if you ever do that, your ancestors will be happy wherever they are because they are daughters, they are grand, great great grandchildren finally returned. When they were taking you out of Africa, they said, a door of no return. Listen, it's now the door of return. I am officially inviting you to come back home. I, 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 I think I will, I will connect with him because um, I've decided to sponsor over 
10 people from my own pocket to visit the Manila on all the trips that I've been. Start from Brazil, Suriname, Guyana, Trinidad, Barbados, and now we are in Jamaica. Because we need to reverse it. That's why I love what uh, Mr. Jose has been saying. We need to reverse Atlantic. If we can come together and make Marcus Garvey's dream come true, Black Star Line. Do you still want to have Black Star Line? <laughs> I, I think I am more practical when it comes to certain things. We, we celebrated Marcus Garvey today, but can we let that legacy continue? But maybe few black men come together and say that we are partnering and we are going to reverse Atlantic by getting a cruise ship that stops on. We start from Barbados because that's where most people were taking shares across. Yeah. Barbados, we stop by all the islands, we pick you all and buy to yeah. Canada. Yeah. Hey. I believe that that. You don't think you're the president? <laughs> For you, but also we are expecting you tomorrow at the Ubuntu Awakening Summit. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there because of Dr. Osei. Yeah. Because I believe that wealth creation is the way to go. I believe in wealth creation, especially generational wealth. I know I'm so young to be talking to you like this, but I woke up one day, I was, I was actually insulted. I did a video in uh, Liberia, having a great time in a resort. Then people started saying that, they keep on saying you want to promote Africa, but the resort that you're promoting belongs to a Lebanese man. So what are you promoting? I sat down and I'm like, this guy is right, but I need to prove a point. You know what I started doing? I went back to Africa COVID when everybody was in their rooms. I was not scared I was going to die. I keep on going to black businesses. I went to a hotel that the woman used four years to build. And I was like, are you sure you built this by yourself? You black? You African? This, I, I asked her so many questions and I put it on camera. I woke up the next morning, the video was everywhere. And guess what? Every African owned business in Ghana started reaching out to me. I own this business, please come and promote it. So COVID, I was so busy. So I wear my mask. I come to you, you. And you know the impact of these videos? If you go to Ghana today, there are so many businesses, black-owned businesses, that came out of the videos that I did during COVID because these guys never believed that as a black man, you can start your own business and make it. So this is why I believe that we're going to summit is very, very important. Yeah. When we make money as black people, say I don't have a chain, you know, because I don't want to go back. There is slavery, they, they used to put chains on our ancestors. Now, when we make money, we want to look so cool by going for the chain that was used to enslave our ancestors. Now, that is what makes us cool. But I want to tell you something before I leave. The reason why black people need to start working together is because of your hair. Check, check your hair, touch your hair. Oh, you, oh that's an hour one. <laughs> touch your hair. We, <laughs> Mr. Tony, you want to touch your hair too? I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm gone. We are the only race that our hair grows together. Every other race, the hair grows in the north. So they can start their own business and make it. But as Africans, we need that. That is why, for someone to come into a black people, conquer black people, he needs to divide them first. Your hair tells you who you are. So it's about time for us to work together as one people. Thank you. Went to Egypt, I decided to go to Kenya. So my wife is from Kenya. 